Hello everyone, today from the side of med videos crash course, we have a topic here known as contraceptive types and pharmacology. So before going into the pharmacology and types of contraceptive, we should know about the major purpose of the contraceptive and the major purpose of the contraceptive to stop the conceivement or to stop pregnancy from occurring. Now when we know the purpose or the major phenomena concept of contraceptives you can go into the types and pharmacology of contraceptives we have different types of contraceptives which are used on different conditions as well as um, their roots and further their pharmacology is different but most common type is uh, are the three types uh, but, but we can say that we have different type of uh, pills but most common are of three types Number one is the contraceptive pills, second is the transdermal patch, patches and third is the vaginal ring. They have same type of working phenomena. These three contraceptives are basically of combination of two major drugs. One is estrogen and another is progestin. The active form of estrogen which is available in these drugs is ethanyl estradiol. And further the mechanism of, mechanism of action for 28 days of period is similar for all of them although the route of admin the route of administration and we can say the time interval required for each dose is different and which which we would uh, study later on but the major concept is that they have a com these uh, three drugs have a combination of two drugs ethanyl estradiol and progestin and then further thing is that they have a similar time period they, they work for they are like they works for a 20 28 day cycle so first one is the contraceptive pill contraceptive pill is basically the pills with the same combination of two drugs as i stated uh, before these pills are given for 21 to 28 days first and then they are followed by four to seven days of placebo and as a medical student you should know about the concept of placebo that placebo is anything any drug uh, which is which do not contain any uh, active ingredient but basically it is it plays with your psychology it plays with the patient's psychology and then due to placebo withdrawal bleeding occurs basically withdrawal bleeding is any type of bleeding which occurs instead of menstruation as we would consider uh, if we would consider a normal cycle of 28 days menstruation occurs in replacement or alternative of that uh, menstruation is the withdrawal bleeding and the withdrawal bleeding is a time period in between when there is no drug in body when there is no progesterone or estrogen in body to maintain the endometrium in result withdrawal bleeding occurs withdrawal bleeding occurs in all the three type of contraceptives as I told you their mechanism of action is same then the next is transdermal patches as a medical student you should also know about transdermal patches the transdermal patches are all those type of patches or you can say bandages which are sticked to the uh, naked skin to our naked skin and then the drug is slowly released into our body and most commonly the uh, transdermal patches the drug in transdermal patches is highly lipophilic so that it can cross cellular membrane Regarding the concept of transdermal patches, these patches are given once a week. They could be uh, taken. They could be attached to abdomen or pelvis or buttock region, and they are attached once a week for consecutive three weeks. And the fourth week, and in the fourth week, no patches attached, so that 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 period is drug-free period, or we can say the placebo period, at, as we have learned in the pill th pills section section. As we have learned in pill section, it is the placebo period in which there is no drug in body and soon withdrawal occurs, withdrawal bleeding occurs. Last is vaginal ring. Last in these three is vaginal ring. Although there are many type of uh, contraceptives we, which, which we would go through in a brief period. Last is vaginal ring. Vaginal ring is basically a ring type of structure which is placed inside the vagina by the woman herself. She does not need a, you can say, professional help, but she she she, she does need a guidance uh, as to where she should put it in her vagina. But medically, it is uh, it is placed at the junction of anterior and posterior fornix. These are the two fornix and this is the cervical uh, cervix of uh, vagina these are the two fornix and this is the cervix and this there 
at this side vaginal ring is placed again vaginal ring is like a continuous source of a drug for the body same combination and it is kept there for three weeks and then re uh, removed at the fourth week so that the placebo or the no drug period can occur and so withdrawal bleeding just like normal menstruation occurs if we can consider other contraceptives uh, rather than the three ideal contraceptives we have we have the progestin only pills then we have the injectable progestins progestin implants progestin uh, intrauterine devices and then we have post coital uh, we can say contraceptives first progestin only pills they only have progestin not estradiol or estrogen within them as an active ingredient and they should be taken on a regular basis because estrogen is absent and the we can say the ratio or the potency and efficacy is a bit low rather than those three which are in combination but it is used in usually lactating mothers or oh, as you know in during lactation estrogen shouldn't be given to a mother because estrogen is an inhibitor of prolactin and growth of a uh, mammary gland so it would uh, inhibit the mammary gland and lactation so it shouldn't be given to a pregnant lady and that's the reason progestin only pills are prescribed during uh, you can say a lactating uh, period or lactating interval of a mother then we have injectable progestins injectable pro progestins are a bit like they work for a longer duration Duration and they work for like three months and every three months a subcutaneous or a intramuscular injection should be taken of injectable progestins they work as they, their work is the same as progestin only pills and then we have uh, and the uh, contraindications uh, contraindications are same as to the estrogen intolerant therapy intolerant patient or contraindications to estrogen uh, therapy is very high so in that cases we uh, prescribe progesterone progestin only pills or injectable progestin uh, and then we have the progestin implants and as its name indicates it is implanted within the body and it is implanted subdermally sorry here i have written subdural but it is subdermal within the dermal layers and then it is as reliable and as potentiating drug as sterilization in a woman and it is totally reversible after surgical removal of the implant and the most common the most important thing is that it works for around three years and that is the most important thing you should be considering because it is used for long-term use then we have the progestin intrauterine device as its name indicates it is a device which is which is uh, plotted inside the uterus intrauterine inside the uterus within the uterus and this device provides uh, contraception for around three to five years that's a very long term period and then this is usually indicated for those who are co who, who the, those patients those women who show uh, contraindications to estrogen therapy and contraindications are there like if there is a history of pelvic inflammation in those women or in any woman or ectopic pregnancy history is there so these type of devices shouldn't be used at all now uh, last uh, of the contraceptives is post coital contraceptives basically it is emergency pill which is used after unprotected sex and most commonly the ingredient which is uh, introduced in it is liver nor gastril it is preferred ingredient for post coital or emergency uh, contraception and with a uh, liver nor gastril we can have ethanyl estradiol in combination of drug and these two drugs should be preferred within 72 hours or as soon as possible possible after the intercourse in the same category the last is ulipristal ulipristal is also a post coital uh, contraceptive which can be given within five days of uh, pregnancy we have learned about the we have learned about the topic of contraception the the concept of contraception the types of contraception and now we should go for the pharmacology of contraception so in pharmacology first indications come in indications uh, the most common indication is for unwanted pregnancy unwanted pregnancy most common use of contraceptive is for unwanted pregnancy or for not conceiving then the other uses are like dysmenorrhea and amenorrhea dysmenorrhea means abnormal uh, menstruation and amenorrhea means no menstruation at all 
and then we have men, uh, menstrual cramps menstrual cramps are basically the painful cramps which occurs uh, during menstruation phase then we have acne and then we have endometriosis endometriosis is a certain type of condition in which the endometrium the endometrium the inner lining the inner lining of the uterus is basically grown outside the uterus in the pelvic region and as well as on ovaries and the response and the dangerous thing is that they respond to the uh, estrogen and progesterone uh, uh over like we can say the estrogen and progesterone hormone graph and so they shed like normal endometrium and because they cannot be uh, released from the vagina they, they they are they're kept there and due to that thing a mass is formed and it is very painful and it is also used in polycystic ovary syndromes now we have more of action regarding estrogens we have a, a negative feedback of estrogens on LH which is the luteinizing hormone which is important for ovulation and FSH which is the uh, follicular stimulating hormone and which is important for the stimulation of follicular cells which, which is important for the further formation of ovum and then we have uh, progestin progestin is basically the pharmacology or the uh, more of action of progestin is basically it thickens the cervical mucus and as you should know that the cervical mucus shouldn't be thick thickened so that the sperms can pass through it to fertilize the ovum but if it is thick and viscous then sperms couldn't pass through it and fertilization wouldn't res uh, wouldn't uh, occur then we have a special note for you guys it is like a uh, withdrawal of progestin stimulates with the uh, withdrawal bleeding basically i told you about the three major contraceptives and the withdrawal the phenomena of withdrawal bleeding so the major thing the major responsible factor for withdrawal bleeding is the absence of progestin and body regarding that placebo period now we have adverse effects we have adver we have all the many adverse effects but there are some common adverse effects which are seen Due to estrogen and progestin. Due to estrogen, the common adverse effects are breast fullness, headache, nausea, which is a feeling of continuous feeling of vomiting, and high blood pressure. Uh, regarding progestin, it decreases libido. Libido is very important in male as well as in female because it it, it stimulates uh, the person for intercourse. And then we have depression, and then we have Hirsutism. Hirsutism is basically growing of hairs or like mustache on women and acne on women's face and acne and then we have some severe side effects. Before going into the uh, pharmacology of severe side effects, you should be you should have one thing in your brain that uh, estrogen is very lipophilic and lipophilic means that it break, it, it stimulates the breakdown of uh, uh, all the uh, cholesterol within the cells and it really stimulates its release within the uh, bloodstream so it means that it increases the uh, level of cholesterol within the blood and thus if it is increasing the level of cholesterol within the blood it is basically increasing the condition of coagulopathies estrogens common adverse effect if is high bp due to this lipophilic property and further these all severe adverse effects are also due to this lipophilic uh, we can say adverse effect of estrogen so number one is thromboembolism which means formation of thrombi and emboli and then we have stroke which means this uh, the is the thrombi or the emboli is in the brain is in the brain in the major artery of brain and which causes which causes a stroke myocardial infarction which means heart attack and we have thrombophilobitis thrombophilobitis is basically a condition in which there is a venous inflammation due to a thrombus and then we have certain type of persons or certain type of patients on which we should to use contraceptives number one is smokers obesity obese patients or previous history of coagulation pathology and as you can as you can as you can notice these all type of patients or persons have some type of blood related high cholesterol level problems and that's the reason they are contraindicated regarding the especially the estrogen therapy for contraception this is med videos crash course here kindly subscribe the video and like it and give us your feedback down the comment below thanks for watching